And she said in her heart, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, and one, one reference says, but if I can touch just at least the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. The story is beautiful. Jesus is surrounded by a whole plower of people. And she fights her way through that crowd. And I, I, I picture that in my mind as this frail little lady trying to get through all these behemoth guys. You know, the, the big guys are always in front of the line. And they've got him surrounded. And especially in this male culture that this time was. Women really didn't have the right to be even in the clamor, in the culture of the time. But this lady is making her way through. And I can see her pushing and shoving, excuse me, oh, excuse me, trying to get through. She finally sees him. And in my picture, in my imagination, I see her falling, lunging through that crowd to just touch the hem of his garment. Jesus immediately stops. He says, who touched me? And as you and I would have probably done, his disciples looked at him and probably laughed and said, what do you mean he touched you? Look around you. Everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me. In all the clamor of life, when you feel weak, when you feel depleted, just touch you. He'll recognize the difference. He'll hear your heart's cry. He'll feel and sense your weakness and your need of Him. And of course, the answer, the bottom line of that story is that Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in what? Peace. She had suffered for 12 years without peace in her body. But she touched him. And he touched her. Freedom from bondage. In Acts chapter 16, verse 6, the people of the prison reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore part and go in peace. Now this was a physical moment that simply Paul was released from prison and it was just the explanation of the difference between bondage and peace. But we know there were other times that miraculously the Lord delivered out of, of bondage and, 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 and imprisonment. And this life holds, I think, as much or more as any generation in time so many things that will bind you and will own you. There are, of course, chemicals. There are avocations and occupations. There are hobbies and habits. There are pleasures and blessings that can possess you. I have, have said, and and having been a former business owner myself, if we're not careful as a business owner, it will own us instead of us owning it. Right, Jimmy? Right. <laughs> when it does, it's bondage. And the Lord doesn't want that for our life. And he offers us freedom, peace, freedom from restlessness, Isaiah 32, 17 says, the work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of that righteousness will be quietness and assurance forever. I need that. We all do. Freedom from discord or disharmony. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell, be complete. Be of good comfort, be of one mind. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Ephesians 2, 14, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, discord, 
And then the fourth chapter, the first verse, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We studied that in Sunday school this morning. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The opposite of that would be disunity of the flesh without the Spirit. Freedom from grief or sadness. We find this story as Mary and Martha grieved over the death of their brother. I found these words that I thought was, were, were sweet. As Jesus came down the road and some of the folks told Mary and Martha that it was Jesus coming, and they made their way out of the house where the grieving was going and made their way to Jesus. The scripture says Jesus was very deeply moved. I want to tell you that Jesus himself feels your grief, your sadness. He is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He's not just aware it's one thing to be aware, but it's another to feel. And he feels our sadness. Isaiah 14, 3, it shall come to pass. In the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow. John 16, 20, I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy because of his presence. I'm just about done. Freedom from lawlessness. 1 Peter 3, 11, Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Peace is good to be sought after. And obedience will bring that. Living in a life of rebellion will not bring peace. Will not. I say to every adult here, live in the order that is proper among our, in our communities. But I also say to the children and the teenagers that are with us this morning, rebelling against your parents will not bring peace to your house or to your life or to your future. It will set you up for devastation in the future. If you don't learn to respect that mother and dad and obey them, you won't learn to respect and obey teachers or policemen or governors and your life will be devastated eventually. And then lastly, and the most important of all, Romans 5, 1, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by his faith in his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. If you today do not know the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, if you have not allowed Jesus Christ to come into your life, forgive your sins and become your Lord, you don't know peace. But we offer you his peace today. Peace in your life, peace in your mind, peace in your walk, and peace for eternity <clears throat> through Jesus Christ who offers you his mercy and his grace this morning. We have sung a chorus for years. It's an oldie. He is my peace. He has broken down every wall. He is my peace. He is my peace. So this morning, let me just ask you that this week, when you face fear, I want you to remember, He is your peace. 
this week when you face worry. Remember, he is your peace. This week when you face confusion and don't know what to do, remember, he is your peace. When you face aggression and someone stands against you, remember, he is your peace. This week, as you may face trouble or sickness, remember, he is your peace. This week, something comes to try to bind you, put you in bondage. Remember, he is your peace from that bondage. This week, if you face danger, remember, he is your peace in tumult. This week, if you face restlessness, remember, he is your peace. This week, if you face discord, with breaking relationships. Remember, He is your peace. This week, if you're forced to walk in sadness or grief, remember, He is your peace. This week, if you face lawlessness and the temptation of rebellion in your life, remember, He is your peace. This week, if you face the judgment, you will not have to remember. You will just know that He is your peace. Would you stand with us, please, as we sing? so this to be in your presence, to live in your presence, to walk every day in your presence. And Lord, if we're able to do that, we know that we will have your peace. You've promised your peace to go with us. So Lord, if there's those here today that is without your peace, if they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that even right now in their heart of hearts, they will ask you to cleanse their sins to forgive them and make them whole and let them know your peace. Lord, if there are struggling relationships, if there are troubled hearts, help us, Father, this morning to release those to you to experience your peace. 